Uh, good morning, folks. Welcome. I'm Afonso Zienso, right here at the Liberia Public Radio and LPR TV. Lot has been unfolding in neighboring uh, La Cote d'Ivoire, Cote d'Ivoire, as Ivory Coast, uh, in this to Liberia. Uh, for the first time, we're going to be getting a word direct from Abidjan, uh, Liberians, standing back, and we're going to be breaking in very shortly to have a conversation on the unfolding situation. I'm Afonso Zienso of the Liberia Public Radio Station. It is of the prison, from the prison. It is of everything. There was your baby. Oh, you gave me life. I was praised this day. I'm here to praise my God. Because he gave me life. Come celebrate. Come to the Come to worship me. It is of the prison. Hallelujah, eh, giving the higher praise. 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 Hallelujah, yeah. give me the hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Giving the higher praise by Liberian gospel artists. Uh, keep praises in Liberia. So we want to welcome our viewers and listeners uh, this morning, this 11 20 Eastern Standard Time, right here from the New England Bureau of the Liberia Public Radio and LPR TV. What well, I done this morning, a Liberian based in neighboring La Cote d'Ivoire, reached out with the Liberia Public Radio to, to tell us the ordeal or what is happening. That would be the first hand information for us here at Liberia Public Radio to get a word from inside La Cote d'Ivoire on the prevalent situations. Cote d'Ivoire border with Liberia, there have been a fragile relationship in the past way at now. What is the latest? What is the government doing as the government reach out to the Liberian community in Cote d'Ivoire? These and many more, these are the major to answers question, but we hope to get a take this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are. We'll be hearing from inside, like, uh, inside Cote d'Ivoire where Liberians are and the current situation unfolding. I'm Afonso Zienso. Stay tuned. Let's get this program going. Time is fast spent in neighboring Cote d'Ivoire.
Okay, the crisis is everywhere. Tied. Superpower to Nigeria is also battling on the other side there. Tied. No reason Nigeria will want APC back in 2023. As you may know, the issue of Boko Haram is taking place. So the region, so the world are over. Besides the coronavirus, economic crisis, leadership crisis, and internal crisis building up. Let me bring the guys standing by in neighboring La Côte d'Ivoire to get a sense of what is unfolding uh, uh, there this evening. Gentlemen, so we have Mr. Rob Dixon, this is live from Abidjan. Mr. Benjamin Tewet is also uh, in Aracos. I'm gonna be going to them to introduce themselves and tell them who they are, by the way, prior to this I interviewed, there was extensive conversation behind the scene to validate where this information coming from and who are they. There are a lot of pictures that we receive here, but I uh, tried to observe committed it uh, several web that was Facebook. There's no way we can displace those pictures. They are very graphic and disturbing. Let me go to I uh, Rav, who initiated this uh, conversation. Uh, Rav, uh, good evening and welcome on LPR. Good afternoon. Good evening. Okay. I'm Rob A. Dixie. I am, I am the, the president, president of the Liberian community, community in Kogo I don't know. know. I am I a son technician that worked work with for RFC International, International Fellowship of Christian. Christian. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Let me go to Mr. Tebe. Am I correct? Getting the right name, the last name? Ben? It's Tebe. Tebe. Okay. Let me yeah. make it a little bit much easier for me and for mm -hmm. the audience, if you will, to allow. I would just call you Ben uh, so we can get a conversation for you, correct? Ben, yes, I, I yeah, no good problem. afternoon and welcome. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay. Let's so, join. Yeah, where is Ben as we speak personally? Where are you now? Ben is in Abidjan. Ben is a Liberian. He's been in Cote d'Ivoire since 2007 up to today. Okay, 2007. By the way, Cote d'Ivoire, that's my old terrain that used to be in York City. And I know I was there during the East uh, Gay Robert and so mm -hmm. many other crises. So I know exactly what something like that. But guys, let's get to the point here. Uh, uh, Mr. Desing, thank you again for reaching out here with LPR. My understanding, you are based in Kokodi, and you are the head of the Liberian community, correct? Yeah. yeah. How long have you been in Abidjan? I've been in Abidjan since 2003. 2000 what? 2003. 2003. Wow. So to you are well uh, grounded. Uh, as we speak right now, so let's enjoy a little immunity. How is the situation as far as you are concerned where you are in Kod, uh, in Kokodi? Oh, the situation in Kokodi is this orange, but for a uh, deep plateau, it's not easier than you say it's not what? It's not it's not, it's not easy in, in Debato. When you say it is not easy here, so provide some clarity. What is not easy? What specifically is not easy that you can tell our audience? The security situation. Security situation. Yeah, security, security all around Debato. And people are not coming out to go on a normal business. When you say security all around, doing what? All oh, the patron all around. They have been arresting since Tuesday last last week. Up to now. Arresting who specifically? Oh, for now, they are they are arresting anybody. But on Tuesday morning, uh, sixteen person person were arrested and taken to prison. Okay. One release. One release. Okay. Let me go to Ben on the other side. Ben, which part of Abidjan do you live? I live in Rivera Kukudi. Or oh, Rivera Besides the I know no community. Okay. So no. uh, tell us your own ordeal. What is happening? And first and foremost, have 
the Liberian community base in Abidjan, have you guys heard anything official alerting you from the uh, embassy of uh, Liberia embassy in Abidjan, by the way? Yes, because the Liberian community at large, since this incident started uh, on the 20th of uh, April, there were several meetings and they decided to engage the Liberian embassy in Abidjan. But you know the issue of diplomacy, it takes time. So this is where we are. And as we speak, we are just moving in fear because when that happened on the 20th where we got this information that these alleged four Liberians uh, attack a military barrack in Abobo, there's an area called Ndotre. Mm -hmm. This is how the entire thing started. And then the following day, uh, State security went to a deep plateau where we have uh, 75 to 80 percent of Liberians who are living there and started arresting people. This is how the entire thing started. But the Liberian community, a large, as I told you from the beginning, they have been engaging the Liberian uh, embassy constructively and the process is on, but we don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. So, um, Talk to us here a little bit from what you know, and I know to everybody in here, I know exactly to what you're talking about because I was in the uh, Africa course as well on a lot of things. Uh, did you guys see this coming? What is the authenticity as far as you are concerned, the truth, for Liberia? How this, was there any sort of news, rumors, or something that were filtering in the streets of uh, Abidjan as you guys move around that something was about to happen? How did this happen? Do you have an idea, gentlemen? I, I think this is one of the issues that even Liberian themselves, but sometimes when they speak, other people say these people they are in opposition because what we are is the idea of four men going to attack an army barrier, a military base. It's just quite impossible. Reality, look at the reality on ground. However, this has happened, but we cannot really like interfere or say anything further. But the thing is that we are trying to appeal to the Liberian government to intervene because this is not healthy for us. Yes. Uh, I believe, uh, Mr. Dixon, you wanted to come over to. Yeah, uh, like for the question, neither of us, we never heard any rumor when we wake up in the morning and photo all around the, uh, the media and friends calling, oh, this is what happened, this is what a uh, librarian want to do with the game. So, as one of the head of the librarian community, I called my president at large with my colleagues that we can meet and send it to the embassy. Because this is not the first time. We have an issue of green election and people have to flee from taboo to Liberia because they said one of uh, Bamba, who is the ambassador to George Weir came in Kodi with Liberians. So I have to ask a question to the, to the uh, 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 Liberian. Hold on one second, Mr. Dixon. I'm getting an echo from your end. Do you have any device on? Device. Yeah, are you listening to the program yourself? or I want to make uh, sure. No, 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 no. OK, all right. That's OK. Just adjust your camera. Go ahead. Carry it on. Okay, so I asked one Ivorian, who is a Bamba? And he said that this Bamba is a is a Ivorian, but uh, a vassal to President Georgia. 2010, the city having, and we have to enter UN ACR compound. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's something on there that I want to echo coming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
the city has it. We have to forcefully enter your Asia compound where we were until the call President Babu. And we went to San Bernardino. So the incident is always has happening. Happening over and over. And we, our government cannot do nothing about it. So we are now calling on the Liberian government to do something. To do what specifically, uh, let's get it out there. What specifically you want the government to do? We want the government. Do you want to go home or what? I don't want to go home. Yeah. Let me pray with you. I got married here. I have a child. I have my work here. I live here. Most of us have our property here. How, how are we going? We have our buildings here. So we don't intend of glory. And two, we don't have negative motive of our government. So let the government with the international community intervene in this crisis. Okay. Let me go to uh, uh, Ben there. Ben, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Afonso. Okay, uh, it's a, I, I don't know how to categorize it, what is a crisis, uh, but I know when these sort of things happen, how, you know, the repercussions, not something mm -hmm. necessarily from the government, but a typical to Ivory, and how they react, uh, the sort of reprisal, the, uh, the, the, uh, the retaliations and all of that. So I, I listened to Mr. Dixon. What do you want your government of Liberia to do in this sort of critical time? I think the Liberian government released a press statement and the president of Liberia, Dr. George, we have spoken about the situation, saying that Liberia cannot or will never be used as a base to destabilize the peace that is ongoing in Cote d'Ivoire. Now, I think that statement is welcoming, but I prefer that the Liberian government sent a delegation to come and meet with its counterpart. That would be one of the key things I think could be done. Yes, instead of maybe being in Liberia and writing and sending communication, it's good that a delegation comes and meet with the Liberian, the Liberian government as well. Then they can have just a face-to-face -face discussion. That would be one of the best things, I think. Are you prepared to go on if Liberia were the government or the government will take decisions. Uh, this is enough. Is enough. Uh, it, it's, we do not have the capacity to police or provide security for our citizens in neighboring La Côte d'Ivoire. But we are sending buses or we are sending uh, whatever means uh, to come home. If that was, if they reach that point, I am not saying in any form or context that would be the government GOL uh, decision. But if they reach that sort of uh, critical point, what would be the deciding factor? Well, I think it depends if we have to like observe uh, the situation and see if we are moving from bad or worse, as we can say it in Liberia, then possibly I can go. But for the moment, I'm a working person and I'm also going to school. I just started my university education in 2020. So I cannot just leave and go just like that. But if our security is not really guaranteed, then we have to go back home and see what best we can do. What is the treatment are you receiving from your neighbors as we speak? As far as you are concerned, let's be honest here. Uh, anybody came to you while you were talking, the entrant, any threat that uh, if there's anything here, we will come to you. Those are normal things. But what is the state right now as we speak? No, since the 20th of uh, April up to today, as we speak, in my compound or in my community that I live, I haven't seen any Ivorian coming to me to say, if this happened, this is what we are going to do. It's only the state security that really like trying to raid people, as very Liberians. If not, ordinary citizens have not been, they, they, they are not really involved for the moment. 
Yeah. And that's what I've been surprised because I've been calling a couple of friends and I've not seen that because I know the days of gay Robert, uh, besides mm -hmm. the state security neighbors were the first. Uh, yep. Mr. Lexing, let me just go to you here. Uh, Liberia are predominantly uh, based in your city, Yopugon as well. What are you guys hearing from other communities where Liberians are? What are you, what are you hearing? Oh, for now, we uh, call all the communities that we know. And uh, you guys still here for now, but uh, yeah, I said we're in there for the grant. They are yeah. okay. I just spoke with him yesterday, but for this part, it is not easy. In the block, even on Tuesday, they arrest the people for their own home. Hmm. Hmm. So that is. The situation, yeah, Gentlemen, without going into the details, you're not a security personnel, you are a peaceful librarian in school, working, and all of that. I, I tried to process this and wrap it around my head, but I find it very difficult. Uh, let's get it right. You, based on ground, you monitoring news, you know what is going on. How many to Liberia, as far as you are concerned, the variant state radio or security force has announced that you know about that we're involved in this, uh, 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 what about uh, Saga? How many, how many to say? And then official number? Or for those that are want arrest uh, and kill, we have a person that will kill. Because three of women and one, one no, no, excuse me. Three were killed and one of women. Yeah, those pictures you same. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I wish I have the authority to display the but I for the uh uh, community rules of our uh, broadcasting and you know public uh, they are very very terrible so i bent what is the state radio reporting to how many people who is facilitating the is the government of Cote d'Ivoire speaking on as to who is behind this uh, yes it's the Afghan government because i listened to a video and that was two days ago where we have the police director and also the spokesperson for the National Army. And the journalists were really asking, what really do you think is the idea behind this? Because you said these people came to attack and then you form telephone, you form this, you even found a contract form that indicates that these people signed for 5,000 United States dollars to come and to stabilize. What do you think? Or do you think it's possible that four men will just come and attack a base, a military base? Now, these spokespersons from the government, the only thing they could say was, at the moment, they cannot release any information because they are currently conducting investigation. And if that is done, they will come up with the findings. This is what was said on state television a few days back. So these people, are they residents of La Côte d'Ivoire? What is their identity? What did the security uh, community, what are they saying? Where do they come from? How long they stay, all of that? Any sort of detailed information to ever uh, provided to the public? Well, although their identities, that mean in terms of documents, they have them in their possession, but it wasn't really clear or indicated that these people, they reside in Abidjan or in such part of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. No, that was in state, not at all. Yeah. Mr. Desing, I know it's impossible, yeah. but it's not possible to know every Liberian, you even being a community uh, leader, uh, but the dead, uh, the folks, uh, the wounded or the dead reported, have you guys established any identity from the Liberian side? Uh, oh, I know this guy, maybe he used to live Trevi, he used to live uh, Yopugon, he used to live uh, Asavon, all of those places. Have you guys, anybody came forward to establish their identity? That was the first thing that we did. did. We share with the community leaders that we can conduct an investigation in the community to see if they know them. But since they don't know one, have come up to say they know somebody among them. 
Wow. So well, well, we, mm -hmm. we, we see the pass for the Adi Clan. And, and uh, it's just it. But well, well, nobody knows somewhere or someone in the Munda. Guys, what is the rationale? Someone that is on some sort of a, a mercenaries uh, tactic that they will be carrying full ID of a foreign nations, having a, a pass for the a lot of stuff like uh, Mr. Dixon sent, uh, ID cards and all of that, uh, having the contract sheet uh, like you, you said, mm -hmm. carrying. What is the rationale? Four person to attack the military barracks. What is the purpose? Mm -hmm. Do what? To seize the barrack? Or do they have all a collaborator there? What is the security community saying? I think less information we need to know more than to what we are hearing. Yes, I, I think the security force or forces of this country has not really been sincere in this process. Because we never authority, that means people from the Liberian embassy and that of the Liberian community, whenever they ask, they only answer this. They have to wait because investigation is currently ongoing. Now, when our people ask, you are saying we should wait, but how long? They cannot provide any definite time frame. This is the issue. They are saying whether it will take days, weeks, months, or maybe years. So this is where we are here. Yeah. Any information has the government come out to say these are the number of people that we have in our custody? Uh, these are collaborator or suspected uh, people that are helping to facilitate. Has the government come out to announce the number of Liberians being apprehended as a result of this uh, incident? As far as you are concerned, publicly, any of you guys know? They haven't come out on radio to tell how many Liberians there. Oh, we yeah. ourselves are community leaders, like the president for Jay Palatou, the Tajasi Talali. He gave us the full amount of, of people that, that were registered. People that were registered was 20, finally released, and 15 in St. Lamarcus. Uh, uh, Ben, what yes. are you doing? Uh, 20 yeah. arrested, fire release. On what basis those fire were released and those 15 are still in detention? What is the connection? Any explanation provided? Well, maybe that could be just based on the investigation conducted by security forces of uh, the Liberian government. I think that should be the key point. Yeah. Maybe they found, they, they found it necessary or uh, they felt that these people, according to the explanation or what we have uh, really found out from them or uh, explanation that we're giving, maybe uh, we, we can let them go. I think so. This is from my own view. Yeah. Yeah. School, school sensation as we speak in Cote d'Ivoire? Yes, quite frankly. Children are, you, are going to school. Are you currently at, uh, in school as well? Do you feel free, feel safe going to class? Uh, yes, I'm going to school, but most of my classes are online, online. because I'm doing continual courses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is filtering in within the community? I, I'm not sure whether any of you guys can go to bed sound sleeping to either leave one eye open and uh, I waiting and uh, seeing what is happening outdoor because I know Cote d'Ivoire. I know how... Uh, the ordinary and uh, 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 to be honest, like you guys say, I'm, I'm really happy that uh, the ordinary are worrying the narrative because that's the most danger. Because those are people in the community with them, they know you, there's no way that you can uh, escape. Uh, are they asking for identity? To, uh, people traveling, they will see you because they're no strangers. Uh, are they asking for folks' identity, for example, Mr. Dixon, Ben? For the moment, no. But uh, I think that was two days back or two days ago. I was just leaving from somewhere with my wife, and we met like five to ten military personnel who were trying to patrol in the community. And quite friendly for me because I work for a Christian organization as an administrator for an international church. So most of the time I'm out, but I'm deeply afraid. Because in terms of communication, where you're in a public transport, 
And then maybe you receive a call from your boss or any other church member who would like to, you know, most of the people that don't speak French, so mm -hmm. they would like to communicate with you in English. And so sometimes I, I find it very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, say Liberia, so why? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. They begin to. Yeah. To so, okay. um, how is the GOL, uh, the government of Liberia, are they aggressively pushing this here because uh, Liberian lives are in danger? What are you guys hearing outside of Abidjan, other idea Liberians in different, different cities? Are you hearing any information from those places as well? Well, from last week up to today, we heard from the authority that our government, GOL, are going to send delegation, but up to today, we don't know. And whether it will be this week or next or whatever time. No, not at all. This is our fear. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Dixon, do you yes, guys sir. feel like uh, you are sitting on a time bomb because uh, you never know anything can go off hand? We are not hoping for that. Mm -hmm. I am hoping for that. No librarian will ever hope, and hope for that. But do you guys feel that you are on a time bomb? Anything can spill over? Yes, we feel like that. Because I'm here since 2003. And I know what has happened from 2003 to 2010 and just 2020. So we know what has happened. So we are very, very experienced. Okay. I want you guys to hold on to our uh, Liberia base, LPL, uh, Chief Angle there. Mike Down is joining us from inside uh, the city of. Uh, Morovia, let's see what is the talking point, uh, politicians, stakeholders, what are they saying? Let me bring in Mike down. Mike, are you hearing me? Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon to you guys uh, from Morovia. It's a pleasure okay. having you all. I didn't okay. know that they were already on. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so that does it. Okay, so Mike, uh, let me just bring you in. You're based in the nation capital where major decisions are coming from. These are our Liberian brothers based in neighboring La Côte d'Ivoire. What is the GOL? What is the latest information? What is the Ministry of Information? What is the authorities saying now relative as of current with the situation on, uh, in Aricos? Any official uh, communication? Do you know whether the delegation has been dispatched to Côte d'Ivoire? So, so I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm finding it a bit difficult because you're coming a bit broken. But again, let me see whether I can set my so I, uh, set here properly. Are you, so are you getting me now? I'm hearing you. You getting me? Yes, I'm hearing you. But let me see what I can do some some uh, adjustment okay. here. Oh, let me just so keep you. Let me keep let you in me the back. Let me just go off and then do. Okay, uh, I will go back to the guys that I. Folks, um, when you're in a situation like this, uh, are you guys, are you being able to communicate with family members uh, inside Liberia, gentlemen? Oh, uh, yes. I communicated with my, my sister Laura, and uh, she told me that the government had already sent some data, sent a delegate, but uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen them. Because I was just at the embassy on Monday. Okay. Uh, ben. Yes. Have you, have you talked to any family members uh, inside Liberia? Well, not precisely, but I spoke with a friend of mine. I was yesterday morning regarding the situation. We briefly chatted on Facebook and she wanted to find out that my former classmate, how things are like, and said, we are here. We are just hanging there for the moment. For the time being, we are there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, because, I mean, uh, every librarian, uh, everybody glued to a uh, news network, monitoring different, different channels to see uh, yeah. what is happening, what is happening. But I, I kind of try to figure out these things here. For present, what is the end <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. what is the government saying in terms of this sick uh, or when it's a bamba guy here? Is he like a what a figurative or is he a person that the government keeping close eyes on? Is that sort of blame game being shifted to him? What is the connection? 
to you guys any information and i know it will not be official information but you in cote d'ivoire people are talking different radio stations reporting different events is the name being mentioned in this thing as far as you are concerned you guys no, no for this incident yeah no in the evening during the election we never heard anything about it it was a time that uh to a government to answer room and when uh i think four or five hours were brand that hired he didn't keep him out people, people say saying that he was he, he is, is a uh a, a bastard to uh 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 um president george so uh uh ben Yes. Well, let's put on this thinking yet in your own human sense and uh, think about this thing. Yet. Is it some sort of thing that you think has been orchestrated? And if that's the case, what could possibly be the reason? And why few for Liberians uh, will be you? You know, but Liberia up to, again, you have to put your hair on the chopping board because of uh, past history, things that people that were Liberian and Liberian have been involved in. I was in yeah. Sierra Leone, uh, our own guys ran all out of there. And what, I, I mean, help me out here tonight, the, 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 the viewers. I mean, what what is it, what actually is happening? I mean, what are they saying? Because, and the reason I'm asking these things yet, I mean, nothing so easily hard, right? Before anything busts, before it reached to that sort of level uh, to spill out, you have people will hear a little things here and there. People will be talking, oh, they are Liberian doing this, or they are social group of people doing this. From what I'm hearing, nothing of a sort. And out of the sudden, we saw these people, whether they were using a vehicle, who was driving that vehicle, how they got that car, where they have an arm, where they got that arm, and you know, were they in uniform, or you know, I, I try to process this. Uh, yes, I think Afonso is one of the reasons or rationale behind this entire thing is uh, according to interpretations from people that we talk to this a political game that they're trying to play i mean the current uh, leadership or the current uh, or regime in power because as you may be aware you know that the former president he has already been free released from the icc and one of the key things was the government of this country has been demanded to provide all necessary, uh, 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 should I say, all necessary, put in mechanism of all necessary things that in order this man will return. Now, when you talk to people, people are saying this is just a political game that the people are trying to play because they want to like use this situation to say, oh, we cannot guarantee the security of the former president and his people that are coming back. When you talk to people, this is what other people say, around themselves, because they say it doesn't really make sense where you see four, just four persons, four men, and even the colors they carry, it's almost like something I just bought yeah, I from a shop. This, yeah, it's, it's it's this, 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 yeah. So this is just, uh, it's so disheartening in fact, yes. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dixon, you want to add to that? Yeah. And if you look on the phone and you look at the list that they make, almost the same here, here right here. Yeah. Because we are comparing and contracting to know why four men who just work on the moment and say we are going to attack and we, uh, we, we are going to assassinate our, our president. America. Yeah, this person here, uh, this ID card bearing this name, uh, BDL, uh, is this person alive? Do you guys? No. As I said, did you this one? One more winner? And one went to the head of police and said, I think, uh, interrogation for 15 minutes, he died. Hmm. Wow. So we don't know where we are. 
So uh, uh, this this is a brand new uh, uh, Mercedes or car glass. So these ammo, uh, these rounds that I've seen here, those are, I think the so what were they using the car glasses to put in the, to be used as a bullet <laughs> or what? We don't know. We got only the two colors with one one of the scene. So I don't know why they were using the colors. There was some that used a color one could leave. You should have red scene, everything down scene. Well, after this time, they haven't tell us all the embassy of Abira. Who behind it? Who brought them? Look, if we check all the communities, they are not only some of the communities. We call the army, we call Tabu, we call San Metro. They don't mm -hmm. know them. They don't know these people. No. Hmm. Ben? Yes. I think the Francis. It's frightening. Uh, yes, sure. In fact, by the way, I think it will be good that the Iranian government, these alleged four Liberians that were killed, all these bodies should be kept. Because these people, they have family members. They came from somewhere. If you think these people are Liberians, let them not, because for me, if they intend to, to bury these bodies without verification, that will be the biggest injustice to Liberia and to the people of Liberia. Is that why, these bodies, do you think is that why the, uh, is that why you guys are hearing right now what the what the causes of these people? And then well, you, they haven't. The government has not been able to be frank and tell us to maybe like our embassy to say the cops or causes are in this SYZ area. But for me, I'm trying to say it will be good that the Liberian government. Keep the bodies, the dead bodies, until these bodies can be verified to find out whether these people they are real Liberians or they are people from any other area. Secondly, we have to know whether these documents that they are even talking about are really Liberian documents because. This time, anybody can face any document from anywhere. Yeah, it's very I mean, possible. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, very possible. I mean, so we, we have to know if these documents are genuine. Let them, let them not try to play like the political game that they have already started. So for me, I'm calling on the Liberian government to get in touch with its counterparts that, look, you have said that these people being alleged or killed these bodies should not be buried. Let these bodies be kept until we can verify that indeed these people, they are Liberians. But and if you know, they do, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if they have to bury these bodies, evidence has already been destroyed. Yeah, because uh, like this document here with this person name, this is a passport. Number Liberian Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, blah blah blah. This person from Harper, uh, because with this here, the uh, GOL government should be able to establish. And uh, yeah. uh, again, that, that's that's a sort of system which, of course, started none of uh, yesterday. Uh, with this information, they should know uh, this person area. I don't know what are family members. Have you guys heard anything, uh, any of the deceased, any family member? So nobody is establishing the identity of these people that died. I'm not sure what I, that has happened from inside Liberia that I've not seen. So who they, who are they? Where they come from? And like you rightfully said, somebody just having, uh, carrying a country identity does not suggest that that no. person, he or she, is okay. the origins of that person. People fix yeah. all sort of documents to do different, different things, evil things. Yeah as well sure wow this is this is uh, do you think we're going to get a, a definitive information to relative to see what happened or as i said we have gone to the embassy we went along with the owner well we wrote a letter to the labor government and it was on Monday that they are coming to conduct a 
interrogation. But since then, no one I ran out. Wow. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, because the embassy said was concerned, and uh, the second command he told us that if should have been happening, what the government normally do, write an embassy and see and say this is what I have. But since then, the government of Tobiluba have not yet done it. But because of the pressure of the community in here. We have put pressure on the embassy and they have gone there. They tried by all means, they did respect them. Up to yesterday, they have a good clearances for the family to see those that are in prison. It was only yesterday they gave that okay, they can cook and carry. One week now. So you see the place of we are at. Wow. I, 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 I don't know, Ty. <laughs> this, uh, this sort of stuff here, I, I, I don't know. Um, so Ben, how, what's about our uh, librarian sisters? Are you guys communicating? Uh, people getting word from different area Terry and say, oh, this is how things look like, this is how we'll, Feeling there and stuff like that, as it, I quite, I'm quite sure librarian sensitivity has been uh, really been subsided as a result of this, in terms of movement. Yes, we have been having a very restricted movement since the twentieth. Even I spoke of, with a friend of mine today, and he said, "For me, I don't intend to go out until this thing can be resolved." So people are really living in fear. Wherever you are, you just have to stay in though. For us, we have to go out because we have our, our obligations as working people. So this is the reason for which uh, we have to just leave the family and come back. Even by 6, 7, or 5, 30, then you have to just try and go back from the area you came from. Even if you don't go at that time, your family members will have to call you and find out the location, yeah. Wow. So we are just living in fear. Across yeah. the memory, on top of your hair, how many librarians you think? Uh, in I, I know it might sound ridiculous, uh, but how many librarians you think within uh, Abidjan, uh, as we speak? I know librarian being there, and like Mr. Dixon said, people are already set out, uh, people are already being uh, integrated, some people working. Doing everything, and you can just abandon and go home. Yeah. You can live and be anywhere as long as life is going on fine. So, uh, do you know? You guys know the number, Mr. Dixon, uh, as a community here. Do you guys know how many into library across the Middle East now in Cote d'Ivoire, or is the embassy in touch uh, to say we are monitoring, we are observing, we are in touch with community leaders? Are there been any rapport with the uh, embassy prior to this? Uh, for now, we cannot estimate. God, even within our community, there are some people at Liberia who don't want to identify with the community. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. But the, the embassy answer for every community will send a list of people that live within the community. But as some people just, just know, want to associate with the community. Okay, so uh, as we gradually get to the uh, finishing line here, uh, Ben, let me ask you, let's say the government of Liberia, uh, folks and of course, GOL people, they monitor these different, different social platforms and stuff like that. Say they were listening here, what could be the cutting up points or suggestions on the appeal that you'll be making to Liberia and even uh, the Cote d'Ivoire government. This is a uh, it's, it's it's not good between the neighbors. I mean, uh, we have a long relationship. I know it's been rough uh, in the past, but uh, we need to heal and uh, you know forge ahead uh, in the interest of African solidarity. Uh, what would be a pure first? to the residents where you are, Cote d'Ivoire, the authority, what would be your appeal? 
Well, for me, I will like to say to the authority of this country where we have been living in, that at least they should be able to see reason. If even there is anything that has gone wrong, according to them, we are all humans. Let them do things according to the rule of law, because every country has its own law. So they shouldn't like do things because they just want to do it or they want to capitalize on things or past things that won't be really good. So our Liberian government, I know diplomacy takes time, but we are in a very critical uh, situation. So like the Liberian government try and send a delegate, at least they will be able to come and meet with uh, the leadership of this country so that the lives of their own citizens, I mean the Liberians who are residing in Cote d'Ivoire, at the end of the day, they won't regret because we have seen that four persons have already been dead. We don't know where the bodies are. And the security, security forces of this country decided going into the homes of Liberians. So we don't know what's really going to happen in days to come or weeks. So for my appeal is the Liberian government to speed up this entire thing, the process. I mean, delegation should be sent, not to take too much long time. Yes. Yeah, uh, and I know before I bring in our man from uh, Liberia here, uh, as the president of Cote d'Ivoire, Alassane Ouattara, as he's spoken out in an official comment from the president himself on this situation in the nation no. address, has he said anything to the nation? No. No, I haven't been able to monitor that. Not at all. The president, as President Water, has not said anything. That's not spoken. No. Only, not his to my knowledge. only his security officials have been speaking out. Yeah. They are saying investigation is ongoing. Okay. Just hold on one second. Uh, Mike, are you there? Are you hearing me now? You got to unmute yourself. Mike down. You have to unmute. Sorry for I'm taking so long because we're having some power outage here while at the same time we having some okay uh, I think that's internet breaking from means yeah. to do here in Morovia. But how okay. be it yeah. um I've been monitoring and so uh on the issue uh the minister of foreign affairs uh the Mazwa Kemayan recently uh condemned the situation saying that the government of Liberia will be sending delegation to Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. But up to this time, I don't know whether uh, such delegation have been sent to to Cote d'Ivoire. So as it's the government has said, yes, this, they are following it closely, according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they are following this very closely and they will ensure that uh, this issue is brought to rest because um the master Cameron said that uh, so, uh, or, or articles is part of the manor robot sort basin so as such uh no uh, uh assailant will use uh quote unquote uh who believe to be liberians will use the country name for such chaotic situation so that's what he was saying uh, recently at the honoring of jetty uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So far, this has been the only statement uh, coming from the the government of Liberia, actually, uh, officially yeah, now. Yeah, I'm monitoring here from Algeria. Uh, the Information Minister uh, also expresses uh, on behalf of the government uh, that they're going to see. Things. But this is, um, I believe, this should be treated uh, with some sort of urgency. Uh, I could be wrong, but I know the diplomatic arrangement type protocols and all of that takes place. Like these gentlemen and these folks are saying, I think uh, when there is a delegation to, uh, from the government of Liberia showing or in articles, that res it helps to restore calm, brain sanity, and to sort of sit stabilize uh, the situations. So why why is it taking so long? Because uh, well, I, I, we are hearing four citizens claim to be Liberians they have already been killed. So why we can't have somebody to be dispatched uh, to see, to do a follow-up? Well, um, Alfonso, sorry again. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a bit uh, of... Okay. 
okay, uh, not you... hearing you, but again, okay. probably is is from my end. I apologize for that. Uh, is from our end because of the broadband internet uh, problem. Just encountered some problem, but I did not get you clear. But if if I may, uh, just what, respond what I'm that, saying. I, I okay, yeah, hello, Mike. Yeah. Hello, Mike. Come on. I'm asking yeah. why, why is it taking this sort of time because we are already hearing the four kill are uh, alleged Liberians being killed. So four of our citizens are already been dead in Africa's according to what the Avarians are saying. So why yes. this long that they cannot dispatch uh, immediate delegation to help to stabilize and restore some hope to the Liberians that are based in Cote d'Ivoire overall? Well, sometimes the government will want to do something that uh, probably they have despised a delegation there. We don't know, but that was the official statement that came from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mind you, sometimes they work, and when it is not deemed necessary yet to bring it to the public, they won't tell the public. But uh, so far, that was the only information they said going to despise uh, a delegation to Cote d'Ivoire to ensure that as uh, uh, people believe to be assailants from 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 Liberia, uh, 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 Liberians assailants, so that they 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 they, uh, they can investigate uh, what led to that going there and on okay. whose so, instruction, for a matter of fact, they went to Cote d'Ivoire for. Okay, before I go back to the gentleman uh, to the gentleman in Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. How extensive this conversation within the media industry or the media community in Liberia? Or are they just focusing on their politics? Who said this? Who said this on Capitol Hill? Uh, is the media aggressively pushing this sort of a uh, conversation to get government stakeholders or other actors involved? Well, sometimes the media, if also they will report on issue or such, but again, Continuity in a uh, 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 consistency, let me say consistencies in reportage. Uh, sometimes it is difficult to, to, to the local media here to see that if, if for example, uh, you talk about um, Ministry X has done X, Y, Z, and then at the end of the day, the public will be very keen to listen to the outcome of that particular issue that you highlighted in your story for the first time. And Sometimes it's difficult. You cannot see the follow-up to that story or to that particular information. So I thought sometimes the information just come out distortedly because, uh, uh, again, the difficulty in getting uh, some of those information, pieces of information to the public sometimes is the problem. While at the same time, the government, uh, some government officials, they do blatantly disrespect the uh, Freedom of Information Act that were passed in 2010 uh, uh, to ensure that information can be freely given to the public. Sometimes it's difficult. Uh, sometimes few wizard blowers will come up with such information. Are you guys for uh, it can get to, into the press? Are yeah. you guys demanding answers from the authority? Uh, are they willing to speak out or people are just still tight lips? Like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, this has to do, this is more or less a diplomatic channel. Are Fox media demanding or getting answered or pressing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, for example, uh, to get some tangible answer? Well, this was, this was, uh, uh, the, the statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was the second statement, sorry, uh, from the government of Liberia. The first one came from the, the Ministry of Information, Cultural Affairs and Tourism, uh, headed by Mr. Eugene, I uh, mean, Ledger who ran it. But again, that first statement was saying that the government was so concerned about it. So it was just buttressed by the Master Kemoyan saying that again, the government uh, will not allow a citizen to be used in some in, in neighboring country for such insurrection or, or for, for such chaotic situations. Again, uh, the press is still waiting. The press is still waiting. No, there have been no official statement again. Since the statement by Kim Yan some four days ago now, there have been no official statement. Well, uh, true, uh, uh, not true, but uh, 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 delegates have been dispatched to, to, to Cote d'Ivoire, okay. to Abidjan or whatever, to ensure that this situation is brought on a, on a control. Again, probably, if also sometimes there are some diplomatic 
uh, of works that are done behind the scene. Probably they are following such diplomatic channel. So we can right. just say uh, uh, they, they, they just remain tight lip or they are not doing something towards uh, uh, the death of uh, uh, who be Liberians, asylums in, in Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, let me go to the guys here. I uh, will soon be wrapping up. Gentlemen, I try to give you a sense of uh, what is the narrative and the conversation from inside Liberia. Ben, let me start with you. Uh, do you see your government being aggressive uh, in getting answers or resolution to, to this crisis as a Liberian? I don't think so, because we, today is the eve. Now, this thing, the incident started on the 20th. So mm -hmm. today is the eve. 28 and now. we are, yeah 28 rather sorry yeah it is now so if the labyrinth government was like aggressive should i say because we are talking about life and death whatever we look for in this life a dead man can i look for money dead man can i go to uh to, to obtain degree or whatever but the government has wasted so much time maybe liberians are not really like important to our country, should I say? For is example, that, if is that how you feel? Uh, yeah, sure. Because <laughs> if we are talking, if this thing was going to happen to Nigerians at this time, there has been another thing. I know very well that the Nigerian government are going to give a very fast answer or fast response to this incident. But since the twentieth up to the twenty eighth, eight days now. Now this one delegation, we've been hearing it. And it continue to we continue to hear the same story. So we don't know where we are heading. And today is Wednesday. We don't know whether the delegation will come next week or the next month or whatever. Because the month will be ended on Friday. So this is the situation. The Labyrinth right. government is not really doing justice to its citizens. Can I, that one I, I can say. Yeah. So I, Mr. Dixon and I, Ben, there seems to be fear within because, like you said, today Wednesday almost like a. Thursday to Friday and a weekend yeah. is coming to a closure. That is another fear. You don't know what's going to happen. Is that how you guys feel? Yeah, sure. Sure. As I, as I was saying, say, since Tuesday, we have been at the environment. We've been sending letters to the foreign ministry. I mean, after Friday, we, we send letters. Monday, we send a letter again. Up to this time, the line. line of Liberia are in danger. So we don't know why. They don't, they don't want to come right now. We don't know why. Should they never know how Liberia died for us? Or do they want to hear the numbers of Liberia dying? So uh, the main reason I'm having, I have never gone here. Send the incident they have been. But for this one, we don't understand why Liberians should just leave our homes and, and, and attack another country. Even if I've already said, I'm asking the same question now. The point is that Liberians, the government of Liberians should be leader on all on, on, on situations like that. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's high, um, but I. Uh, and the four persons to go attack a military base to go do what to freeze the base they're going to have a coup d'etat or uh, yeah and what i expect because uh, to be honest I, I was in our course and i i know the security apparatus to always uh, provide briefings and all of that in details but from what i'm hearing little is coming out who are these four gentlemen who they were in connection with how long perhaps to stay on the soil of Cote d'Ivoire before getting to this? Who facilitated and why that particular military barracks were used? There are a lot of unanswered questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I said, I don't know what that after they were then killed before the chain. These people wearing jeans, trousers, some of them look yeah. nice dressed. Nicely dressed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, they could have a different inside part, but. I don't see any sort of uh, like they, they are not wearing military attire, something that we are not seeing. So with this here, so it's 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 sort of high, very difficult to understand. Very difficult. Oh boy. 
All right. Uh, do you guys want to take, uh, we have a few minutes, you want to take phone calls? Just in case other librarian wants to interact? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me put the number out here, folks. Please be very brief as possibly as you can. And don't speak on things that you don't know about here. Those sort of uh, accusations or circumstantial stuff. Uh, I think what we are, the purpose of this, and I had this uh, lengthy conversation uh, with Mr. Dixon, and uh, and I think the interest here, I don't think we are here to do anything to endanger them, first and foremost. Uh, we must sympathize with the situation and make sure, and we are having this some sort of conversation to claim our national government attention so that something can be done uh you know to dispatch a delegation there so uh that's the number here to, uh, let me just put it on here to, i believe christopher said he wanted to call uh any other person who wants to call just do that uh, we are here for a few more minutes we can't keep these guys on for the longest yeah here you have uh, our minister of facts versus fiction and all of that this is ridiculous when you have people okay mr christopher lotte tobasi Yes, um, so thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. And I want to say thank you to our... Uh, mm -hmm. in, 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 in Abiquos. Okay. You know, on our we got to... We got to look at certain things here, certain facts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Abiquos military is a sophisticated military. Mm -hmm you know, compared to that of Liberia because of the circumstances right now. You know, Arakos military is advanced. And that particular neighborhood is a uh, Watara stronghold. You know, that particular area. Why would three or four Liberians go over to a whole nation? What, what is there to gain? What, what are they trying to accomplish? So to, to, for a Liberian to be pressing on Arakos, I mean, something not making sense. Something not adding up. I think that these guys were uh, uh, arrested or taken from in the prison, brought to that particular area to kill them and make it look like, because Barbara Laura and the past history and all that nonsense, so that, because I, 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 let's look at uh, 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 propaganda. You know, maybe uh, 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 the ex president is coming back. And, 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 and President Watara is trying to, to stand up tension in the country. And they have the potential to, to spill over to Liberia. Liberia government need to step in and get into okay. this story so that we can get to the bottom and, and we have to resolve it so that certain so intervention can be. We got to do something, Honorable Sue. Okay, so quickly, uh, before, before I bring in the other person, these are your fellow librarians you listen to up to this time. Uh, the presence of their government is not being felt uh, by way of sending an emissary, uh, an envoy uh, to meet uh, their counterpart and say, hey, this is not who we are. Uh, we first of all sympathize, but this is who won this relationship. We believe our citizens here must be safe. On the 20th, today is the 20th. I'm not sure, I'm not seeing anything here that delegation has left Liberia to Côte d'Ivoire. Are you, what do you again, feel about that if you were in that situation? Again, look, I feel bad for our brothers and sisters in Abidjan. Look, we know the history of the Ivorian. No, but that's not a question I ask, Christopher. I'm coming to the questions, but I just want to draw a contrast here. For the, for the, for, 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 for the history of Ivory Coast, just for common soccer miles between there and Ghana, Ghanaian died in Ivory Coast in their numbers. Christopher, Christopher Tobasi. Oh, I don't, I don't eat salad. So do not serve me with salad this morning. Salad is not my favorite. I eat real palm butter. So if I'm I... I'm saying that, look, Mr. Sue, I'm going to get to your question, but I'm telling our brothers and sisters in Abidjan, stay to where you are. If you need, if you don't have anything to do out there, do not get outside, do not adventure, because these people are brutal. We have seen it in the past. Will you come to my question before I go to the next person? The government of Liberia has to be transparent. If they are carrying on some kind of diplomatic, whatever they need to tell the citizens, they need to speak to their people. We want to know the people that die, whether they are actual Liberians 
or they are some kind of other foreigners and, and, and Wakara and his people are playing this kind of propaganda. Who knows what is going on, Honorable oh, okay. But the government of Liberia got to step in front of this thing and then so that we can get to the bottom of what happened because we don't want tension from articles to spill over to Liberia and become a pro big problem. Okay. All right, Mr. Tobasi, well, thank you so much. Articles so remain calm, stay who don't get outside. These people can be brutal at times. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let me go to this number here, 263 number. Uh, thank you for holding on. 7836. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, what's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Moses Sandy. I'm calling from Philadelphia. Okay, Mr. Sandy, welcome. Thank you. What are your, what are your yeah, concerns uh, as a Liberian? Yeah. Okay, but first of all, let me let me let me uh, answer the question you were just asking the brother uh, has to do with what is the government doing you know to to keep our citizens safe in our coast mm. i think uh i saw some communication on on the internet i suggested that uh the foreign ministry is is, is kind of a, they have i think despite mm. a delegation to the africos or some communication have been said there's some communication between the government of Liberia and the Ivory government now as we speak uh first of all to, to distance Liberia from uh, that act whether it's true or not true or not uh so that that is happening but the actual situation i just spoke with uh my friend in the africa who is an Ivory man uh yeah they my friend when i was in the africa their friend since 2000 and i'm like 1991 when i was in the africa up to the time i left from there so and i'm staying in communication every day so my information this morning Mm -hmm. is uh, the government in the Abikos, most especially the, the defense minister who is Arafan Watara brother, is the one playing this game. And his his politics now is the, 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 the trying to to create a situation or a condition <laughs> to make people think that the country is not safe, that Lauren Babo is going back to the Abikos Yep. And, and 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 because because of that they want to overthrow and uh, so but we can't take over to so just create some kind of insecurity for the people and for the international community so they can keep Babo staying in europe this is the strategy those guys were arrested uh uh uh, uh i think along the, the the border that they alleged that those guys was where 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 you know bringing drugs into the articles they have been in jail in the article, he called the play name one of the cities. So the the double guard for for, for Jill brought them to 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 to, to Abidjan, and, and because they got nobody to to, to use for for that particular thing, they went to Google. How can how can four person go and take machetes and see the go see go and attack a military pirate? You know, no, no boy for, for 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 no reason. So here, yeah, um, okay, uh, what you are saying here, these are these are not uh, the information so that we can validate here uh, from like real public radio, but we do also welcome people sharing the information based on what you're telling. This is what you are saying to your Ivorian friends to you this morning. They, they, they are saying that Ivorian as a whole are saying that what is happening is a bogus something that the government is doing. They, they are doing it a mess propaganda. They, they, they carry on. There's nothing like like like, like cool. In, in, in the article, there was nothing like that. They killed a guy for no reason. Mm -hmm. So, so the government should not just our government should not just distance ourselves. Let there be some investigation. Whether the guys were really rebel. Yeah, and that, that's that's what I'm saying. You know, it's just unfortunate that people, when our authorities, sometimes you try to reach to them to their inability to speak to people, because according to us, uh, what we have in our possession here, there are people that carrying Liberian passport and all of that. These are information that I hope they will be willing to receive to really investigate. When a lot of these people were in Liberia, who are they? Are they Liberian? When they got these passports and all of that? When they left Liberia. Exactly, when they left <laughs> Liberia and all of that. So that's why it's important is beyond just giving the press statement or, you know, these are, it's right. a normal protocol. Uh, we are saying, right. yeah, our folks there that are in worry, there are people who working, who go into school, and uh, they are there for a purpose. So, and yeah. they are indigenous. So, it is important for the presence of the government to be felt. You know. All right, my man. Thank you so much. Yeah, but even 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 my son told me that the the the, the, the opposition uh, uh political party in, in the Arikos will, will be coming up with a statement 
you know, uh, 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 I condemning the, the act okay. of killing the, the, the full guy for no reason. So let, let me do, 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 do hear that. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, look, guys, uh, this is very hard to understand, to comprehend, to process. I, I believe me, I, the reasons behind this. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when you have people who are not forthcoming with information, they live with a lot of a uh, guess game, and that's exactly what we are doing. But these guys, these pictures, these images that I receive, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. There could be a librarian, but there could be a peaceful librarian, maybe doing the early trading, going in. People go do different, different stuff. And if the government is not coming out to, to provide really enough reason, that's why. Who is the librarian ambassador in the Cote d'Ivoire? Do you guys know? Any of you know? Yes. Ben? We have uh, Wadey May King Tower. Well, let me can talk about. Uh, all right. I, I hope maybe it will leave on air time. You guys can share uh, his information. That will be fine. I right, to reach out to them to see uh, what is going on. Uh, and I think uh, uh, and have they provided any phone number to the librarian uh, folks community to call to reach the embassy if there was any information to feed them in with information as well? Have they provided any contacts? You know. Or uh, no, or no. We didn't put them here. Any information we get up, we can go to the embassy and tell them. So there's no, uh, they have not provided any information to say if there's anything, call us and we'll know who to speak with. Nothing of such has happened. Is that what you guys say? For now, I don't have any information on that. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, guys, I know it's a little bit after, I think, four or five in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, uh, please keep up posted. Uh, just as you came out uh, to tell us, to tell the world uh, your concern and how you want your government to intervene, if at all, if you hear by any chance that a government to send delegations, please let us know so that we can also tell the, uh, the public out there and what it looks like. Uh, if the delegation comes, do you guys intend to meet the delegations, uh, librarian delegations? Uh, do you guys have plans, uh, Mr. Chairman, Dixon, Ben? Are there plans for librarian to meet, you know, if there's any delegation? Yes. We want to meet the, dele the delegation. Okay. Because it's not the first time, not the second time. So we want to discuss with them the situation, the one on understand. Every information from there for us to be sure that this will not happen again. Okay. Now, besides contacting the embassy, Ben, have you guys also tried to reach out uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Liberia? And uh, no, because for me, you know, sometimes it's good to do things according to procedure. We are Liberians who live in various communities and we reach out to our community heads and then the head normally contact uh, the all over organization. I mean, the Liberian community are large in Cote d'Ivoire. And then from there, they have to get in touch with the embassy because we don't want to like do it as individuals. No. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Dixon, to Ben, I want to thank you so much uh, for being very aggressive. I know I was a little pinned on you this morning because I wanted to make sure he digs in to get the information in as much. It will be an information that the public will really want to know. We too, we are on an obligation to validate. And that's what I was asking. Are you a Liberian? Where are you from? Where? How long you been living in Cote d'Ivoire? What can you send me to validate that you are Liberian? That was the basis of that because we don't want to politicize. We don't want to create the already drama that is unfolding. So we here at LPR, we also try to do our own due diligence in as much we want the news to go out there. Uh, it's it's not we are not in the entertainment industry we are in a news uh -huh. business and uh, whatever coming out we have to make sure that all of these informations are validated so it was on the basis 
of that. Uh, we're asking some of those uh, questions that could be termed as silly questions, but uh, we yes. also have our own process that we're there. So before we let you guys go, uh, let me do uh, Dixon, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What would be your last and final message to Liberians uh, in Ivory Coast, first and foremost, uh, you as one of the community leaders, what you want to tell them, what would be your word to the government of Cote d'Ivoire, uh, to uh, Liberia? Okay, let me just pick up this call here. Dr. Willen Tua is a prominent Liberian uh, currently visiting the USA, is here. Let me see what he has to say before we go. Uh, Dr. Tua, are you there? Yes, how are you? Uh, so, yeah, good, good to have you. Ty, good morning. Yes, I know it's still morning on your end there. Yes, good morning. I was just monitoring the program that you have with the two librarians from Cody Four. Yeah, they are still here with us before they leave. Uh, you are a prominent uh, diplomat uh, from in the West region, are currently visiting, and you are a librarian. Um, what do you make of uh, what is unfolding to right now? Yes, uh, well, uh, actually, uh, I don't have much details of uh, what is happening in Cote d'Ivoire right now uh, in the region. Uh, but what I can say is that I know the Liberian ambassador in Cote d'Ivoire. She's a renowned diplomat. Uh, it's tall, but I met her in person. And I would encourage the Liberian community to, uh, to reach out to her. Uh, probably she might have also by now established contact with some people that you know. But I know that she's a career diplomat, she's an experienced person. And so uh, why everyone is being very careful uh, not to be in places they have no business being at this point in time, but it's important to live as closely as possible with the embassy of Liberia. The situation as skinty as it is. So, Dr. Tuan, so what the embassy should be doing in return as well? Well, what I can say now, you know, I'm a little bit not engaged on the leadership structure of Liberia, but what I'm saying to assure fellow Liberians as I empathize with the situation ongoing right now in Cote d'Ivoire. I know the government is also responsible. The government has this responsibility to echo our citizens. But I can encourage my fellow Liberians in such a difficult situation where things get confused. It's good to avoid being in certain places, but to keep in close contact with the embassy. And I can assure the ambassador is very, very responsible. She's a career diplomat. I've met her in person. She speaks the French language very fluently. She's connected. Stay in contact with the embassy while other things are being done to seek the welfare of Liberians. I just want to add my common sense okay. in time like this for our people. All right. Okay, well, Doug, uh, the, the voice of uh, Dr. Wallen Toa, the prominent Liberians uh, with the Air Corps, currently visiting Liberia, making an impact. Dr. Toa, uh, thank you so much. Uh, like, you know, if you get anything from there from your friends in the diplomatic enclave, uh, please let us know and we'll be able to share that information as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, gentlemen, uh, sorry, so just want to make sure to, uh, we're going to be wrapping our hands. Yeah, carry on to uh, Dixon and I will come to Ben. Okay, uh, first of all, on the, thank you, and uh, to all the government, 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 I wanted to do something for the Liberian here, but any information that we gather, let them take time to pull it out because it affects us as Liberian lives here, it affects our nation. So let them be able to handle that information good before coming out. But for the reason, only our name was on the social media. Only our name we can hear. And for our people, 
Let us just pray that the will of God will be done. All right. Let us pray that justice will, will be done. Right. And for the government, let them not be reluctant on situation like this. Let them come, investigate, let them know where we are and where we are going. Thanks. Hmm. Okay, uh, sorry for that. Okay, Ty, Ben. Yes, Afonso. As we draw the curtain down here this uh, afternoon and evening, your turn. Uh, let's pretend we're speaking to the government of Cote d'Ivoire, the government of Liberia, and even to your own fellow Liberians in uh, Cote d'Ivoire generally, not necessarily Abidjan alone. Uh, what would be your final message? Well, I will like to appeal to the Liberian government that Cote d'Ivoire and Liberia we share a simple and common border and this is not really healthy for these two countries as dr tour or i, I can i didn't really get the last name correctly Tour. Uh, Tour, yes i think liberians in Cote d'Ivoire they are in contact with the embassy in abidjan because from the 20th up to today as i told you if we were not in contact with uh the embassy we have done the contrary at this please time. Hold on. Please we, hold on one second, uh, please, Ben. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, go ahead. We're almost out of time. Yeah, uh, you guys from Africa, I just tell the phone. Yes. The line. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to just share my experience with them, and I want to encourage them to be safe out there, and they should respond. They are very committed. Every librarian over there to avoid any loneliness. Until the thing is stuck tired, let them be on you know, wherever they are, let them be in group, not to be individual. Because we know Africa, some of we have been victimized for some of these things that happened before. And by a few, you know, some of our so for that safety, since we are trying to connect with the diplomats to see what our kind of these people be like, let them advise our people to stop being alone. Let them be in a real community in group. Because mm -hmm. we know how our people over there can behave. Okay. Okay. okay thank you so much okay go ahead buddy yes yeah, so as i was saying we are in contact with uh, the librarian embassy if not by this time we should have been going on the wrong page by doing peaceful demonstrations carrying on peaceful demonstration right in front of the embassy but we are very much patient and we expect that this thing will be resolved in a very simple way so to the librarian government you have your citizens, we need you. We know that diplomacy takes time, but at least just for the sake of our own people, for, your, for the sake of your citizen, something has to be done. I think any other country can do that, not only Liberia. Whenever there is something, you have to always fight for your citizen. If people just full pressing a ledge were killed, nothing is done, and security now, going into the homes of peaceful Liberian, then you should know exactly how the thing is going. Something wants to be done intentionally or something is going wrong. So I'm just appealing that government will be able to see reason to send a delegate to this country. So at least at the end of the day, we'll be able to move around freely. Thank you. All right, well, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Dixon, uh, Ben, I want to thank you guys for the courage to come out. I think it was a good conversation. Uh, it's appealing, and uh, we also call in our government, calling on Cote d'Ivoire, and even uh, the ordinary Ivorians, a uh, citizen to see reason. And I'm happy that it has now reached a point, a kind of boiling point, because I know for sure Cote d'Ivoire, and I, they, it seems to be they themselves have apprehensions over this whole thing here because I know how these people can retaliate and how they can act uh, to be at this point here. So I would pray and hope. And like, again, everybody has said, uh, just keep, you know, your eyes open, watch your own surrounding. Uh, let us know, Dixon, I uh, share my information with Ben as well. Uh, let us know any information. Uh, if at all you get the um, embassy uh, contact, let us know, we'll reach out to them. To, uh, 
to be fair and balanced so that we can hear from them to see. We will also try to contact government authorities in Liberia again as to how things go in, how they are accelerating this whole process. Until then, guys, please keep safe. Uh, you know, wash your back, stay off the street, go get what you get, and then uh, you stay home. I want to thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to us having a conversation. Let us know when the Liberia Thai, you know, uh, special delegation or team arrive. Also, let us know so we can be able to share that information as well. Okay. Thank um, you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Uh, Okay, well, uh, folks, uh, every good thing must come to an end. This is LPR special edition here, taking you into neighboring La Cote d'Ivoire on the uh, prevalent situation. The very first time LPR hearing the word directly from ground on ground in Cote d'Ivoire to our Liberians. Our prayers and thought goes out, and we hope the government of Liberia will accelerate the diplomatic process. And we know it takes a time. But this is a situation such as the situation such as the time to do everything possible to make sure that our Liberians, these guys, they're there, they're working, they get their family, they go into school, they're doing, uh, they are peaceful to, uh, uh, citizens, so they have the right to live where they choose to live and where they think life is pleasant. So what is important is the security. I am Afonso Zienso with this LPR special. So until then, I will see you. And to our men interviewers and listeners, uh, we want to thank you for sharing your evening, uh, your afternoon, to, uh, based on where you are, depending where you are, with us here. Let's have this one here. I just want to say thank you for watching LPR TV. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have you heard the news? Well, worry no more. Cousins Photo and Video Production has been providing elegant weddings, conventions, and birthday videographic for the Liberian communities since 2006. Paying attention to detail and emotion throughout the day and taking time in the editing process to create a unique video you will want to watch with family members, friends, and future generations, shooting quietly and professionally and without distracting you or your guests is vital. For more information, please contact us at 484-786-3337. That's 484-786-3337. Or we can also be reached at www.cousinphotovideoproduction.com. Please tell Cousin Photo and Video Production that Asheville the Giant Golly sent uh, there you have it there. Uh, if you're looking to, uh, to require a function, wedding, uh, whatever it is, uh, just contact us in video productions. It's a uh, high tech digital uh, media network. I uh, specialize professional to photograph or videograph or to, uh, they can get your, con uh, your event. Uh, in a contest that it will be very, very memorable. So, so the number there is 484-786-337 is the number. So you just call us here at LPR and we can definitely link you with the Cosint Video Productions, the partnership with the Liberia Public Radio. Latest news coming from the Federal Republic of Nigeria here. The police has debunked claim on the social media that the University of Abuja has been attacked by bandits. The command through its person, uh, Yusuf Marian, stated, that, stated categorically that there is no record of such incident as uh, 22 hours ago. Uh, it was reported that uh, Ambandi has attacked the University of Abuja. As you know, Nigeria is also heavily battling with the Ambs Bandit. Uh, Islamic fundamentalists and the Boko Haram group 
uh, in Nigeria, kidnapping, burnings of police stations and vehicles is taking place, the river state, Kaduna and all over Nigeria. Debate is already ongoing in parliament that uh, the lower house of parliament in Nigeria is calling on the government uh, to declare a state of emergency while the upper house is calling some national government to ask for international assistance. Until then, I'm Afonso Zienso, by God's will and same time, same station, uh, we will bring you, this is a special LPR edition, taking you into neighboring La Côte d'Ivoire for the first time. For us here at LPR, again in the world, answer. Have a pleasant, pleasant, pleasant day. Hallelujah to my King. Hallelujah to my Father. Hallelujah to my Jesus. I bow before the throne. When I look at all the world and I see all the creation, the beauty of the universe, you never, never. Piero TV with Afonso Z and so live from the New England Bureau of the Liberia Public Radio. In today's discussion, we will highlight high call issues from the motherland to Republic of Liberia and issues affecting our community. Asking tough questions is vital to me to have my listeners and viewers informed with the sole purpose of demanding answers that are authentic and meant to be hair scratching situation. Oh yes, to add pageantry to the conversation, senior analysts and contributors of the Liberia Public Radio are here to dissect the conversation from Baltimore senior analyst, Professor Assisi Labozalo, CEO, Rio Academy and Gideon's Polytechnic Academy in Liberia, senior contributor, Amos George is in Atlanta, Georgia a critical tanker and credit of the GOL and opposition to LPR TV foreign affairs analyst Leo Johnson's executive director empowerment square based in Canada